Hello and welcome back. I'm actually really excited about this video. Um, we're we're going to start adding some behaviors to the monster. So let's go ahead and click on our scripted rock and delete the rock behavior. We don't need that anymore. And we can just change this to boulder. Or to keep it consistent, we'll call it rock 3. Um, and now, just to clean up our, our um, hierarchy, I'm going to create an empty game object and center that, and then we'll just call this map center. Uh, usually, um, I, I don't particularly like it when this starts expanding too far, uh, especially once we start like expanding these. Um, it, it, it gets harder to find things as you get more game objects in the scene. Uh, control A, collapse those. Um, so I, I sort of create this little folder structure just to keep my own project cleaner. So I created an empty game object called Map Center. Now th this is at the very center of our world, 000. It doesn't have any components. It, it's essentially um, just a folder. It, it doesn't have any properties on its own. And since we put it at Map Center, um, it, it's, it's not going to change anything in our scene. And now let's create another folder inside that, create empty, and we'll call this environment and on top of that another folder called rocks and that's that's just a third empty game object and then you can click and then control click to highlight all the rocks like that and we're just gonna drag these onto rocks and then we can collapse that now our scene looks a little bit nicer um, while I'm at it I'm gonna drag the terrain onto the environment and Oh yeah, <laughs> but we can delete this capsule. That's um, I used that as an example earlier, but it's not contributing to our scene. Um, what else do we have here? Creature prefab um, and directional light. Uh, on top of Map Center, I'm going to create a folder called Lighting. Drag the directional light on top of that, and then collapse those. So now this is a, m a much cleaner thing to look at. Now we can click on our enemy. I'm just going to call this enemy one. Or just, I don't like the one. Just call it enemy. Now going back to project scripts, create a new folder. We'll call this AI. What should we call this guy? Is he an ogre? He's not a cyclops. He's got two eyes. Um, I need a better name for this. I'm just going to, I'm going to name him Axon. Uh, so we'll call this Axon Movement. That sounds cool. Um, now let's drag that onto Axon. Let's name him Axon. I like that. And while we're at it, let's just commit this all to GitHub. Season 1, episode 13. Commit 1. Um, and then the, the more you can put in the description, the better off you'll be. Uh, usually, if you stop, take a month off, and then come back to your project, it's really easy to forget where you were at and, and what your commits meant. So... Um, I, I try to make these as detailed as possible, so we'll say um, edited, edit, <laughs> edited it, edited the material removed script from rock uh, named axon. Commit, sync. And now that now we basically have a checkpoint. So if we mess anything up later, we can always come back to that checkpoint. Now I'm gonna do a similar thing that I did before. Control X to delete these comments. And we're just gonna create a transform variable. We'll call it player transform. Player transform gets Game object dot find and the name of the player 
which is FPS controller. And then that found a game object, and then we're going to take that game object's transform component. So now we have a reference to the player's transform. And then with an update, um, we're going to take Axon, and we're going to rotate him toward the player. So transform, Axon transform. Game up, uh, get component, transform. So we're going to take Axon's transform component and rotate it to look at the player's transform component. Like that. Um, and if it seems like I'm going really fast, uh, here's, here's just a quick tip. Um, rather than typing out all of Axon transform, you can just do A and then T, and then um, it, it understands that T is this capital letter, and so you could do like ATR to narrow the search, and then you have it, and then just space to lock that in. ATR, or dot, look at LOAT for look at, and then PLT for player transform. Uh, so it, it recognizes the P, the L, and the T, and it, it automatically finds that. And then dot P, and then as soon as it highlights position, I hit enter. Um, I, I hope that makes sense. Uh, Mono develop definitely makes your coding life a lot easier with, with that aggressive code completion. Um, and I think that's it to make the monster look at the player. I probably messed something up. Oh, it worked. So, um, it, it's a little bit eerie how he's just, like, sliding in place like that. He's, he's not actually, like, propelling himself to spin. He's just sort of magically spinning toward us. Uh, but when he's running, like, like when he has the running animation, as, as he spins, it, it, it'll, it'll look better. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. Now, do I want to actually make him run in this video, or should I cut this off here? Um, let's just give him his default running animation, and we'll see how that looks. So click on the guy, click on creature 1, open up the animator, and then within this creature 1 folder, expand creature 1, and we just want to find the running animation. run. Oh, actually, um, I really like this spawning animation. So let's bring that in, make that the default, set as layer default state. And then from there, we can transition into the running animation. So we're just going to create a transition from spawn to run. Uh, and then I want to make sure that run is looping. So we can double click that now it's highlighted in our inspector, and we just want to make sure loop time is checked, which it is. Save that, go back to game, and hit play. <laughs> so he climbs out of the ground, and he starts running toward us. Um, he's, he's not actually moving. We're, we're going to have to code the movement, um, but holy crap, that looks pretty freaking awesome. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited, too. Uh, th that looks really awesome. And I, I know my voice is kind of monotone, but uh, I just want to say I, I really am excited for you guys. Like, like moving forward with learning to make games and learning to code, it's such an exciting thing. And once you get the hang of it, it's really, like, ridiculously fun. Um, so I, I hope you guys are excited, too, even though um, I'm probably pretty dull to listen to. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, my goal is to lead you through the process of creating entire games and then marketing those games and then publishing them. Um, so I hope that I can help you guys find success as indie developers. Um, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.